Hi Robin, um, I've got the spreadsheet in front of me you so kindly sent me. So let's build some character stuff. Uh, normally in Gumshoe, I'd split my available point as a starting point. I'd split my available points between all the abilities and see what the average is. Uh, here it's coming out at around 3.5, so I know that's like, you know, um, if I went sort of completely flat about across all abilities, that's where it'd be. But I'm going to specialize a bit. Um, I'm sticking six points in athletics because it's always handy. And plus, my character is sort of physical type person, so we'll give him a bit of running and jumping ability. I normally stick composure at six as well because I know that you like mind games and scenes where one has to keep one's cool. And we already established that there are mind controlling fungi running around the place. But I'm sort of expose myself to future harm and push myself in advance and leave it at four, which is good but not great. I'm sticking fighting at six because always be able to, go to throw a punch. Gambling with those abilities where it's I always feel it's a waste of points. That's gonna come up like a you know, once per game tops and in a single player game it's tricky to rely on it. But at the same time, it's quite evocative, so I'm sticking two points in there. Uh, health at six, which is probably me being a bit cautious, but we'll see. Um, I had mechanics at two initially, um, on the grounds that I just have enough points to make, make, make roll if I was stuck. I've bumped that up to four, uh, on the grounds that I'm wondering if sort of humans' sort of edge in this world is mechanics that if everyone else is sort of like weird and fungal and organic and living 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 tools then maybe good old machinery is sort of the human shtick i don't know if that's true but anyway it'll be handy to have at some point i hope um i left medic at zero um because medic and vehicles are two abilities where you can normally get someone else to make the role for you like if i'm hurt i'll go to a doctor he said with absurd overconfidence um, preparedness, I've said at four because it's always great to have preparedness. Sense trouble is two, which is lower than I'd like, but it fits with the whole impetuous gimmick. Sneaking at four, I originally had sneaking at six and vehicles at two, um, but I've moved two points from sneaking into vehicles on the grounds that you mentioned at flying other ships earlier, and goddammit, at some point I'm going to fly an other ship. Uh, as opposed to hiring an other taxi man. Anyway, um, that's where Erdan is at the moment. Um, as the question of fighting the brunt versus running away from the brunt, uh, my abilities are actually shed out light. I've got six points in both athletics and fighting. What I'm going to do is. Um, I'm carrying a letter that I'm supposed to deliver, and I kind of want to take a look at the contents of it. So, but I also don't want to get in trouble. So what I'm going to do is run away from the brunt and escape him, but make sure that I am seen fleeing an angry brunt, so that at some point I can claim that the letter was torn open in the scuffle with the brunt, and so I can take of the contents and deliver it, but have some degree of plausible deniability. And as I say that, I'm now wondering ah, to what degree the whole like memory reading um, power of the fungal stuff works. But uh, I'll find that out when I have to make a composure roll in a session or two. So that's where we are. I am going to spend four points of ethics uh, as I attempt to flee the Burunt in a slightly calculated and showy manner. Gar, you spent four athletics points uh, for Elgan to not only evade being kicked into the river, but also to be ostentatiously seen to drop the message case that you're carrying because you would like to uh, uh, have an excuse for the case to be cracked and to therefore look at the message inside the case. And uh, let's find out of the die roll uh, how well you do. You're spending four points, so it's unlikely that you're going to fail since the average 
difficulty for most situations in a gumshoe game is four, but let's see just how well you succeed and get the extra benefits of not only not being kicked, but being seen to crack the message case. So that's a roll of four for a total of eight, and that's pretty impressive. So I'd say yes, indeed, uh, people all around you notice as you uh, side swipe the, uh, the, the kick of the brunt and uh, uh, you scoop down and you theatrically pick up the case and uh, you scamper off. At this point, the furious brunt grows even purpler than before and uh, says, you have interrupted my interior spiral. I declare you Thorak. This brings up the question of investigative abilities. Uh, you have nine of these. These are ways of knowing things. Uh, some of them are interpersonal. That's uh, ways that you convince people to supply information to you. Uh, some are technical, involving practical knowledge of uh, 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 often uh, scientific matters. Uh, and then there are uh, the academic abilities, the ones that are basically intellectual knowledge. And uh, so the first question is, of your nine investigative slots, uh, is one of them taken up by the academic ability of religion? If so, you might know something about the rock and know exactly the meaning of what the Burund has just shouted at you. But at any rate, it's pretty apparent that you want to look inside that case. Uh, as you uh, get away from the Burund, you see that, yes, indeed, uh, there's a nice little uh, crack in it that has a, a perfectly fine explanation at this point. Um, so it's pretty apparent that you're going to look into the contents of the letter, but under what circumstances uh, do you do that? Well, uh, only in abilities, yes, I'll throw one towards religion because you've offered it and I want to know what, what being throcked is or entails. Um, and yay on the uh, case cracking, I shall find somewhere, hit it down at the river, so I shall find some shady spot under a bridge where there is enough light to read some of the case, but I won't be that observed. And I was ready to get a peek inside the case, and if it, if it warrants deeper investigation, then I shall find somewhere more secluded. But right now, some shady spot under a bridge will do me just fine. So, uh, first, the issue of the rock. Uh, your uh, knowledge of religion, of course, extends to Brent religion, as it extends to many others. and. Uh, you know that when a Barunt declares you the rock, that uh, the Barunt has determined that uh, you are no longer to be ethically regarded as an ordinary sentient being, but instead to them represent uh, one of the seven archetypes, and that ethically they are unbound from the treatments that they would have to give uh, ordinary other people, uh, but instead are uh, not only permitted, but in fact obligated uh, to treat you as one of the seven archetypes in their spiritual journey. Uh, you, uh, given that you have annoyed the Brent, uh, you think it is possible that uh, the Brent is thinking that you are uh, the trickster figure or uh, perhaps the uh, antagonist, uh, the, uh, the source of uh, uh, humiliation and power, but the Brent didn't uh, specify. So it could, it be, could be any of the seven archetypes, but they're uh, in, in that Brent's mind, he is allowed to uh, treat you now uh, as uh, one of those archetypes. So uh, you now uh, retreat to uh, a, uh, a, a shadowy alcove, uh, which is, as you've specified, protected, but not too crazy protected. And since you've cracked open the case uh, that has the message from the Cecil Nobles uh, to uh, the thing in the river, you, you can now open it up. And so you uh, open it, and there's this slight sort of uh, hiss of uh, uh, stale air being released, uh, and you see that the message is written on very high quality uh, mycological paper, uh, and uh, this is a luxury item. It's very expensive to uh, produce and very prestigious uh, to receive. It shows uh, great respect uh, for the person the message is uh, conveyed on. Uh, secondarily, of course, as a human, um, you could uh, uh, quickly dry this up and uh, consume it, and it would be a powerful hallucinogen, uh, but that's probably not of interest to the uh, sender or receiver of, of this message. Um, and of course, you, I'm sure, want to know what it says, and, and this is uh, how it reads. Honored thing in the river, estimations and salutations from the Cecil nobles, the bearer of this document 
is hereby transferred to you in perpetuity in payment of our outstanding debts. Microrhythmic Control Code EWI 4587. As per our previous discussions, we reiterate our recommendation that the issue of the bearer's true origins be concealed from him at all costs, also in perpetuity. Kindest regards and oblations, Rickamir, on behalf of the Cecil Nobles. So now you, you know what the message says, what do you do about it? 